So, we're going to discuss female reproductive tract disease or specifically some of the complications of egg laying in budgerigars. Eggplant's cutest name for a little bird, so it's a, it's a love budgerigar. Six years old and for the, for four, for the first four years it never laid an egg, they, didn't, they weren't even sure of the sex. But um, recently, over the last few years, the last few weeks, it's been laying an egg nearly each, uh, each two or three weeks. And unfortunately, it's just presented right now with the oviductal prolapse. In human terms, we call it a uterus prolapse. So the uterus has actually come out when the egg was laid. There are a number of causes and uh, the, I will discuss some of them because many of you will have pet birds at home and you need to know some of the things you can do to avoid these problems because obviously laying an egg is natural for a bird. To lay an egg you need the right amount of calcium, you need good body protein, good body weight, good body condition. And the trouble we have with a lot of our birds is that they get an all sea diet and the all sea diet is deficient in calcium specifically. The protein levels are low and then many amino acids that they're deficient in. So simply after, the, after two or three eggs they're calcium depleted, they're amino acid depleted. There's certain amino acids that, they, um, that you can only get from diet and if you're not getting vegetables it's a problem. And uh, when you've got low calcium and it's your fourth egg, you don't have the right contractions, you can't push, so the egg is stuck and there's just straining and out pops the uterus. The treatment is multifold and it's obvious. When the uterus is out, one is we get unfortunately sepsis because bacteria are now getting on the inside of your body where they shouldn't be. It's usually a sterile environment. The uterus is actually a sterile environment. Other other things that need to be looked at are, um, so sepsis is the first thing. The second thing is dehydration. When you're sick, you're not eating, you've got this in, these mucous tissues outside um, dehydrating the birds, so they need fluids, so antibiotics and fluids. Once we push the uterus back, we may choose to actually surgically attach it inside the body so it doesn't come out. We may take, we may put a suture in the vent to stop um, it reprolapsing. But one of the main things we do is we actually give it a hormone to stop it laying, to stop further laying. It's a GnRH agonist, there's laurelin, and it will stop the bird laying, generally in budgies, four to six months. But in a, a five or six year old bird like this one, it will hopefully last for, for maybe forever. Or at least we can stop laying, future laying. There are many things that cause a bird to lay. We'll discuss with the owner things like um, is there a partner bird? Do they put a nest out for the bird? Um, are they feeding a diet that's conducive to laying, which is generally high calorie diet, like an all sea diet? Is the environment such that it's very um, stable? And we can change and manipulate certain things to um, prevent this kind of problem. So I'm going to take our little eggplant and show you what the prolapse looks like. And this is life threatening. If it didn't come to the vet, um, there's, 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 there's certain death. Is there a time frame that they had to get to the vet or pretty much the sooner the better? They've got to come the sooner the better. So there may or may not be an egg there, but you can see at least the good news is we've got some urates that are coming out. But that this little thing is a, a prolapsed oviduct mm. and it's prolapsing out the vet. So it's right for prolapse. I'm, I'm about to start treating it, so I'm going to be using some sterile lube, pushing it back. We'll be giving it some fluids, anesthetizing it, and you guys can follow us through surgery and watch what we do um, with this little with eggplant. Eggplant's going into a weighing dish now. The, the, the time frame is important. I think we should get these cases within 24 hours because um, they're critical, and this is within 24 hours. I gave the owner about an 80% prognosis, but I think it's even higher than that. We usually have a, a pretty good success for them. Um, plus, when I've got an owner that's compliant, that wants to do everything they can, it's really rewarding and nice for the vets, and she falls into that category. So we'll see you guys in theatre. The little eggplant's going to be anaesthetized right now. We're going to put our anaesthetic. So the anaesthetic is really, the anaesthetic is simply a little bit of gas. Katie's our anaesthetist. We've got the little heat lamp that we 
our cooling process. It's just, just some radiant heat as well as a heat mat. This is taken in Australia, Melbourne in February, so it's pretty warm. It's mid-summer. We've actually got air conditioning out and the practice is probably about 22 degrees. It's so hot today. Okay, so a little guy's going under. Head up so you can kind of see um, some sterile siding just to flush. some fluids now. I'm just trying to see how easily it goes back. The only thing that's going to stop it going back would be if there's an egg, which there may well be. So if there's an egg, we need to take that out as well. Did you see that? Yes. Yeah. Do you get the egg? Do you see the egg hit me? No. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So the egg shot out. Wow. I think we might have missed that. We might have missed that. So now that I've taken that, we've now that we've got. So can you see the shell? See the shell? Got it, Mel? Got it, yeah. So there's the shell and there's the egg. It came out with such force that uh, it actually hit, it landed on the table, yeah. <laughs> so the brilliant thing is now that we've taken it out, it should go in easily. We, we, we know what, we know why there was, and you can just see there's so much more room inside now. So that's good. So Katie, um, if you want to, you can just see now all of a sudden the tummy is empty. Mm -hmm. So Katie, can you, if you want to turn down a little half, that would be okay. One, one and a half down. Thank you. So we're giving some additional fluids. You can see the skin, but there's a little, there's a little fold of skin here called inguinal skin. Got a nice big bleb when we give some more fluids. Remember that in humans or dogs, we go on a drip. But uh, a little budgie that weighs 40 grams of drips not not that easy. So we use copious amounts of lube. Have we got have we got this Laurelin? No, I don't think I want. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is put so we, the vent in a bird is, is not, um, the vent in a, the, the, the opening in a bird is not uh, round like in a human or a dog, but it's, it's more rectangular, it's, it's kind of rectangular. So you, we're going to put a stitch on each end of it to try and narrow the opening just a small amount. Still on 2%? Still on 1.5. Remember, the bird's been pretty sick for a while, so we've kept the anesthetic quite light because um, obviously the main, the most important thing is to get it through this. So we've used a little bit of five naught PDS. You should be able to see it in the in the picture. So it's a very fine suture. In the top drawer, it's a blue syringe, clear and blue top drawer. So even though I've partly closed the opening, okay, you can see the opening is partly closed. Um, I'm hoping it doesn't prolapse, but it should be able to pass poo. It should be able to pass through poo through there. What we're going to now do is give a horn. So I'm happy that we've cleared it up. The prolapse won't come out. Let's turn it over now. You're going to keep the head up, Cody, as yep. best you can. And this is really big, but we're going to do a hormone implant. 
your charisma. Thank you. Thanks very much. We're going to use a, a Desmorelin implant. Now it's a GnRH agonist, which means it goes into the apophysis. I mean, the size of the needle is just scary. So this is a this is equivalent, although not the same, to humans who get a contraceptive implant. I don't know, I, you know, I'm not sure of the size of the needle, but this is a big needle. So I'm trying to find a, ster a sterile spot. I might even take away, um, I might just remove one feather, one or two feathers to make a, a sterile area to go in. So we've put the we've we've put the we've put the implant in. You can see how big it is, and I'm going to actually because there's such a large hole where the implant's gone in. I'm going to actually put one stitch in. One stitch. Can you see it, Mel? Yep. Everything is so tiny in these guys. So the hole is so big and I mean there's there's two reasons to close it up. One is to obviously stop the implant coming out. And the other is to close a relatively big hole in such a small bird without getting feathers everywhere. Okay, thank you. Just thank you. So we hope that you're going to watch this little guy wake up now. You can see where the implant's gone in. No, you can actually see the implant under the skin. So it's supposed to be a subcutaneous. Is it better with my lights or not? It's better with your lights. So it's supposed to be a subcutaneous or just under the skin and you can kind of see. So it goes starts here and goes all the way to here. It's this white thing under the skin and there's a stitch where we put it in. So it shouldn't come out. We can turn the bird over. You can, we can just double check that out. Everything is in and you can see there's plenty of room in the, in the drop for poo to come out. And we just partly, partly close the... It's also had... This is calcium. This is a 30 gauge needle. It's the tiniest needle and I'm giving one hundredth of a mil of a calcium product. So it's a very, very tiny amount. So because we use tiny needles, because we bird vets, we use a tiny needle in a sterile way and the, the tiniest amount. And we can accurately give a hundredth of a mil because this whole thing is half a mil. We've even got, we even got syringes that go smaller. So now he's in, he's in recovery, hopefully. We've kept the body temperature exactly what it should be. We've had the fluids. He's got enough fluids now from both before and now to be hydrated. And uh, miraculously, I mean, a lot of it is out of our hands. It's just the fact that these guys seem to recover means we're doing the right thing. Um, antibiotics and anti-inflammatories are a given. And uh, having support and help like Katie doing excellent anesthesia, brilliant nursing, watching the patient makes all the difference. And take a look, you can see a heat pad here and a, and a radiant heat light here. And just to show us again, um, without taking out the egg, if you would have just closed the thing, it wouldn't have worked. We could, we could actually remove an egg as well. And uh, we're expecting a very good outcome for egg plant. And we'll, we'll keep you updated. We'll show you a video in an hour of how the recovery of one of baby looks like. And we'll be so excited when we get the first normal dropping coming out. So we're so happy to report that eggplant. Remember, if I now live in Australia, eggplant is doing amazingly well. This is 24 hours after surgery. The stitch is still there, the swelling's coming down. 
Um, his passing drop things. What I'll do is I'm going to just give him his, his medication, his crop feed, etc. But we were obviously worried last night. The, the hardest part is the first night. But um, I'll just I'll just you look how active and brilliant he's doing, and he's due to go home tomorrow. And essentially, uh, it should be fine. Saved one. Which we saved some from a definite, you know, definitely would have died of that. And the lesson for everyone watching is if you see someone, if you see a bird that's really sick, it doesn't have to be a uterus prolapse. So my finger. So you can actually see it's, a, I don't want it to fly out now, but it's a tame little bird. The owners obviously love him. Yeah, she's and, okay. Sorry, the owners obviously love her. And uh, it's beautiful to have saved a little girl, could you? I'd like to show you how. Anyway, active and active and happy in the cage. So it's, it's, it's always nice to end on a bird that's recovered, still likes the vet after everything he's done. And uh, she's going to go home to her owners, which is, you know, you, we all look for reward and meaning in life, which is very difficult to find. And working with birds can be great. And a case, it's a case like this that gives a lot of meaning to our lives because as a whole clinic, all the support staff, the nurses, the anaesthetists, People who clean the cages and treat these little guys. It's rewarding for us that it goes home to the owner. And uh, birds are underrated as pets. So this little eggplant is going home and we all feel great and we're going to have a great weekend.